so I guess it begs the question, like yeah. you are one of the most powerful people in hip hop. Oh, I, I wouldn't call it powerful. Okay, uh, you are one of the most powerful people in hip hop. Let, nah, let me just I, say. Maybe one of the best good looking, <laughs> the most good looking, you know what I mean? But, 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 but yeah. is hip hop big there? Yeah, well, so at that time, hip hop, this is, okay, so now this is the late 80s, early 90s. Uh -huh. So that time, hip hop was still kind of niche, right? But the people who were into it were very passionate about it, and we all kind of knew each other. You know, we would trade cassettes, we would dub each other's. So if I had Kooji Rap and DJ Polo Live and Let Die or whatever, and you had, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know, like MC Rag, yeah, LL Kooji, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'd trade, I would dub yours, you know what I mean? You know, you know, they used to have those little the double cassette things? So, so it was kind of, that's where I learned how to network, because of hip hop actually, because I would also get the Yo! MTV raps in Rap City from the States, because remember I still had my friends in the States. Uh -huh. And they would send VHSs, they would record, my boy Petty would record uh, uh, Yo! MTV raps, et cetera, and then my dad would go to the States and, and he would bring back tapes and sneakers. That's all we wanted was tapes and sneakers. And, and we'd watch those things, memorize, Life is too short, know every word, you know what I mean? Like, in Fat Five Freddy, Dr. Dre, Ed Lover, Rap City, like, uh, the, like the, the old, old ones, you know? And, 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 and then we'd trade with other people, like, and I would go to other countries even. My uncle was a, a doctor in Swaziland. So this is Zimbabwe, this is South Africa, this is Swaziland. I'll go to Swaziland, and then my boy Sylvester, who was a big Gangstar fan, and Linda Magagula, who was the one who, the first time I ever heard Jiro the Damage had come clean was on one of his cassettes. I was like, yo, I need to, I need to double. You know, that. it's so funny you know? because hip hop is such a grassroots yeah. music, right? Yeah. And you're talking and you you know, we live in the States at the time, but that's exactly how we did it. We go to school and we were dubbing from one another. Yeah. We're up late listening to the radio. But you had it on the radio. For us, it was hard. Because even like for a song to get on the radio, it had to be very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And it would be late. So if someone would be popping in the UK, London, then it would all of a sudden be popping in Zimbabwe or South Africa or Swaziland, you know? So in the early 90s especially, and by the way, I wanted to be a rapper. My name was B2MA B. No, actually I was a rapper. Okay, because I, I was going to get to that. Okay, 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 okay. From what I understand, you were a rapper. Were yeah, you a rapper but, but, here in the States or were you a rapper? No, there. I had already- In Zimbabwe. Yeah, I already let it go. I actually just did it. Uh, uh, I, was, I was just talking about it uh, overseas about if, at that time, I let it go because there was no incentive to develop my talent, right? There was no a rs there was no magazine editors. You, it wasn't a big city like a New York or, or you know, Houston or Miami where you could create like a critical mass and get on the radar of a magazine editor or, you know what I mean, et cetera. There was nothing, right? Zimbabwe, ZBC Radio 3. So I just did a little uh, talk about like if B2MB, born 1975, like, there was nothing I could do, so I had to let it go. I had to let go of this dream, right? And say, you know what, there's no incentive. I'm not gonna make any money and be b 2 b Nobody cares, no one's checking for b 2 b And I wasn't even that good, right? <laughs> but I, wait, but I could've become better if I had the incentive to develop the talent or the opportunities. But now if b 2 b was born in 2000, he would be little 2 b There you go. And he'd be on YouTube. And it would be popping. <laughs> he'd be better than, bigger than Drake or Kanye, right? Because it's right there, and that's what's happening right now with African music right now. It's like, back in the day, you had no opportunity. Like, there was no way you could make money. And then, and even if you came from a little bit of money, if your parents had a little bit of money, they'd be like, what do you do? Are you crazy? You want to be an artist? But now that you have YouTube and social media and WhatsApp, and you know what I mean? Like, now you can get it popping. Like, right. you see what I'm saying? Because, so, little Tuma B is, would have been popping. Like, I was just <laughs> born 25 years too early. You know what I mean? What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.